Hello friends, welcome back to ServiceNow911. Recently, one of my subscribers asked about change management. And the question was, let's say we move the change to production, but what is the course of action if that change failed? Yes, this is a very genuine question. And many of you, or even me, have faced this situation when we move the change, but it got failed. Okay, so what we should do? The first and foremost thing, we should not panic. Yes, this is a common thing. It happens with you, it happens with me, it may happen with any of us, okay? Because this is a critical situation, so you have to keep your patience and you have to follow a certain guidelines which are there with your organization. But today we will discuss some of the common practices which are being followed throughout the organizations, okay, in general. So first of all, you have to identify and acknowledge the failure. You have to gather as much information as you can. You have to see, you have to investigate whether this change is doing some adverse thing or not. It means whatever you have promoted, I know that it is not working, but is it impacting some other thing? Okay, so if it is, then you have to back out the change if possible. And if not, then you have to isolate this change from other things because the more time these things are there on production, it will cause much more damage, much more a disruption of the services. So you have to be very careful about that. Second thing is communication. You have to communicate each and every stakeholder about the issue. You should not hide anything from anyone because ultimately later or sooner people will find out. And in case you have hidden something, you have hide something, it will be a separate consequences for you. Okay. So you have to be very, very transparent. No need to worry. No need to uh, get in so much tension. Just focus on your work, okay? So once the change is stopped, it is rolled back and you have communicated everything to the customer or you say uh, to all the stakeholders, then you have to document each and everything which you have observed. Like what are the causes of incident failure? All the logs. What is the resolution which you are going to provide, okay? So once you are done with all the documentation, then you have to go for the resolution planning. And in that, you have to find ways to remediate it and fix the problem which is causing this particular issue, this particular failure. Once you are done with all the resolution and everything, you have to test it more cautiously on the sub-production instances. Then you have to take permission with the change owner, with the cab owners, with everyone, every party involved and move that particular fix from sub-production into the production again. It may be needed that you need to open a separate change. Depends on your organizational policies. Once everything is in place, you have to validate and monitor the change. And you have to make sure that there is no other issue which is coming from this. You may have to educate the users that we uh, failed in the first attempt, but we are now providing the fix as soon as possible. So all these steps are very important. If you're not panicked, then only you will be able to uh, you know, cover all these steps. Keeping your calmness is one of the most important thing which you have to take care. Of. Because in panic situation, you are not going to help anyone, but you are going to make your life hell. You know, worse than before. So you have to be very careful. You have to be confident. You have to be you know relaxed and do this activity because you are not the only one who failed in this particular change. There may be incidents that. Other people are also failed, but they managed it with calmness, with uh, good insights. So I hope you got what I'm trying to say. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.